Hi. Impressive carrying skills, right? I got some Bud Lights for us. A good strawberry is big, round, juicy. What else can I say about strawberries? <laughs> Grandpa's feeling a little frisky today. Anheuser-Busch this week became the latest company to face backlash from conservatives like singer Kid Rock, who posted a video of himself shooting a rifle at packs of beer. Transgender people. Unfortunately for bigots everywhere, they exist. But what can be done about that? Should we let them just go about their lives? Should we try and morally mandate them out of existence? Well, if we let trans people go about their lives as normal, what are we supposed to do with them? Just let them be normal people? But they're weird. They listen to Carly Rae Jepsen and play Smash Bros while wearing eyeliner. That can't be allowed. Morally mandate them out of existence then? Well, a lot of countries are certainly trying that. But if we do that, we're going to come across as a little bit, well, evil, aren't we? You see, the centre ground on this issue, and the policy officially supported by us over here at the Daily Telegraph, is to denigrate trans people and donate tons of money to exterminationist groups and causes, all while using the image of trans people for branding to sell our products. Have a drink you want to flock but can't make it seem fashionable for the youth of today? The youth, for some strange reason, seem to think trans people are like, normal people, <laughs> can you imagine? Ugh. So hold your nose and put a trans woman on it. Use transgender influencers to advertise your product to their niche internet followings. How about it? Just remember, if you do this, and it's a good marketing strategy, don't get me wrong, don't let your mainstream audience see you doing it. Otherwise, the faction that would rather favour the whole morally mandate trans people out of existence option to dealing with the trans question might do something extremely cool and normal like... I don't know. Hello there, loyal viewers, and welcome to the only YouTube show hosted by a trans woman that will never condone the destruction of Bud Light. Not because it's not disgusting, because it does in fact taste like piss. And not because it's destruction of property, because I don't give a shit about that. But because if seeing a trans woman hold up a can of beer gets you that angry, I think we should be using the sheer force of your rage for fuel to help solve climate change. Like, Imagine if we got all of these Bud Light smashing fascist weirdos on hamster wheels and put a picture of Dylan Mulvaney holding a can of Bud Light in front of them. They'd run for miles out of sheer rabid malice. We'd not need a single drop of oil until at least 2050. And by that time, can you imagine the breakthroughs in wind and solar power we'll have managed by distracting Republicans from campaigning against renewable energy projects? Uh, well, while you're daydreaming about that, let me introduce myself. I'm... Bridget Empire, science and culture correspondent for the Daily Telegraph, the only newspaper in Britain that has yet to go frothing at the mouth insane about Dylan Mulvaney, a trans woman of all things, selling a product via her social media presence. Because no one in this office, besides me, has ever heard of social media before. 
Dan doesn't even have a phone. When he wants to get my attention, he just has to wail wordlessly into a styrofoam cup I got him on a string, and I can only hear him if I have my ear to the other one. Anyway, just in case Dan does get tempted to start screaming into his primitive communication device just to get me back on topic, I should probably explain what it is exactly I'm talking about, no? Just for those few people who've been living under a rock, or are perhaps from the future. From the distant year of 2024 or later. Dylan Mulvaney is an American influencer and actress who took off on TikTok, an app used by people with attention spans almost as short as my own to see people do vines, but for people who were too young to know what vine was. Dylan documented her transition very publicly online and has quickly become a huge name, partially due to her very loud and extra demeanor, and partially because people act really weird around trans people in general. To be fair, Part of that is the nature of her work. She's an influencer. Attention is her livelihood. And as such, she needs to be seen to earn a living. And she's put that necessary attention to some good use, speaking personally to Joe Biden about trans rights at the White House, for example. But, but for a trans woman, having such a high profile naturally sets you up to be ruthlessly attacked. And your ability to have privacy of any sort as a trans influence is pretty limited. Something Laverne and Cox tried to warn Mulvaney of earlier in her transition. Saying that you're like documenting so much of your life, please make sure you keep things for yourself. Everything cannot be for the public. They love it. Yes. They love it, but everything cannot be for them. Yes, I you just, must keep things for I yourself. just did my FFS. And I know, I, girl, we know. I, I, it's all Eventually, someone was going to make it their mission to destroy her. Someone with no roots whatsoever. But the way it actually happened is. Just bizarre, frankly. On April 1st, 2023, for a, a real ad spot, not for an April Fool's joke, Dylan Mulvaney posted an Instagram video doing a spot for Bud Light, a beer that's like Budweiser, but somehow even worse. Hi! Impressive carrying skills, right? I got some Bud Lights for us. So, I kept hearing about this thing called March Madness, and I thought we were all just having a hectic month, but it turns out it has something to do with sports. And I'm not sure exactly which sport, but either way, it's a cause to celebrate. This month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story to see how you can enjoy March Madness with Bud Light and maybe win some money too. Love ya! Cheers! Go team! Whatever team you love, I love too. Okay. Love ya. Okay, break a leg. Brands like to do this kind of thing with influencers and other media figures all the time. Paying for a little bit of publicity from someone who has a lot of followers who might be impressionable enough to think that Bud Light is actually worth buying. It's not. But in this case, however, it reached much farther than its intended audience. Largely thanks to the ongoing moral panic over the mere existence of trans people happening in America right now. So that beacon of sanity and respectability, you know, facts and logic itself, Fox News, went in hard on Mulvaney, referring to her in what the Washington Post succinctly summarises as disparaging and often transphobic terms nearly a dozen times over the next three days. Following this, there were calls for boycotts from many conservative outlets, and a slew of videos emerged of people doing the most stupid thing you could possibly do in response to this whole affair. That is, buying Bud Lights, and then consequently destroying it, instead of drinking it, thus giving the company money for nothing? Listen, transphobes in general are just not the smartest people. Besides normal insane people doing stuff like this, famous insane people joined in too. Like Kid Rock, who filmed himself shooting multiple crates of Bud Light with a submachine gun. Some people took the weird process even further, from destroying a stock of unrelated beards in shops and a Hulk-like rage, to calling in actual bomb threats on several factories involved in the production of Bud Light. Needless to say, this isn't a normal reaction to seeing someone you don't like advertising a product, even if it's a product you feel very attached to. But this is obviously not actually about that at the end of the day. These people aren't reacting normally to the situation. They just straight up hate trans people, to the point where they're actively threatening violence, and enough they would put straight up bullets through any item that even vaguely reminds them that we exist. God knows what they do to actual trans people if they saw them. Dylan had a very dignified response to all this, telling the Huffington Post, What I'm struggling to understand is the need to dehumanise and to be cruel. 
I just don't think that's right. But it didn't matter. None of this was about any sort of misunderstanding, about a disagreement, or even about Bud Light. It was about fascist rage at the existence of minority groups they dream of having no place in society. And they responded with blood. But, interestingly, they targeted the product, a company, a symbol of consumption and capitalism and beer. American beer, no less. All the stuff that right-wingers supposedly love so much. Now, this is obviously about the tainting of the idea of the American beer by association with a group that they personally find icky. But this comes back to the part that's really interesting to me about all this. To American conservatives, products, particularly products that are associated with traditional masculinity and occasionally with toxic masculinity, beers, trucks, guns and the like, are such a fundamental part of their worldview that to change their mental image of a product is to attack their very sense of self. Think about that. A drink. A brand of diet alcohol changing its branding ever so slightly for a niche audience once on Instagram, not even a nationwide ad campaign, provoke this reaction. This strong and outrage, this utter destruction. Does that not say something deeply sad about American conservative mindsets? And the weirdest part about this whole situation to me is, well, trans people generally not huge fans of being co-opted by companies to sell products. It's cynical, it's cowardly, to use our faces to push up sales with one hand while handing money to anti-trans politicians and exploiting your trans workers with the other. How many of these companies using our faces to sell trinkets and boost their shareholders' pockets, donate to the Republican Party and other anti-trans groups? How many of these companies have no medical insurance coverage for the trans employees? because most medical insurance explicitly excludes us. Did you know that? It's true. How many of these companies have prevented their trans employees from unionizing? I can guarantee that for every company using the faces of trans people to cynically make themselves money, one, if not most of those things that I just listed, will apply. Most companies do this shit, and it's not a surprise, after all, Capitalism itself has anti-transgender ideology built into its very DNA, and what? What? Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, fine. Okay, I'll address the elephant in the bloody room then, shall I? A good strawberry is big, round, juicy. What else can I say about strawberries? <laughs> Delicious, gorgeous, gorgeous fruit. <laughs> Co-op strawberries are special because money goes towards trans pride, helps bring LGBT plus people together to celebrate, to show the world that we're here and we deserve to be loved. Our strawberries are currently 100% British and when our members buy them, a share goes towards local causes in the community, like Liverpool City Region Pride Foundation. It's what we do. I, uh, I need the money. Okay, let me give you an actual explanation of what you just saw. In July 2019, the cooperative Orgeous Co-op, a supermarket in the UK, ran a series of advertisements promoting the causes they donate to, and it starred, uh, me. I'd marched at Trans Pride shortly before this, and while I was there, I was approached by a casting director there who was looking for trans women to feature in an advert. Once she said it was paid, I jumped on it because I was absolutely broke. It's hard to live by your principles when you need the money. A few auditions later, I'd been chosen for the job. You know, I was good on camera, friendly with the directors, and persistently made the crew laugh, so maybe that's longer for them. Either way, I was whisked down to London to film an advert for one of Britain's biggest supermarkets. If that hadn't happened, I probably wouldn't have been able to afford to finish my PhD. I probably would have had to move back in with my parents. I not done any YouTube videos as an adult before that, never mind since transitioning, and I wasn't a big name or an actor or anything. I was just a tran who worked well with the crew and the casting company. I was a nobody, and that was the point. That's what the co-op wanted, and I was happy to do it. Without the money I got from starring in that advertisement about strawberries and trans pride, as exploitative as an advert with a trans woman staring into a vanity and doing makeup is, as tired as the tropes used are. As I said, 
I'd not been able to afford to finish my PhD. Honestly, I was happy they were displaying a trans person in a national ad campaign to begin with. Things were nowhere near as bad as they are now for trans people in the UK, but we were several years into the, uh, several newspaper articles a day calling us monsters stage of the Great British Trans Panic, and I was happy such a prominent company would associate with us. A few years on, I was approached by the same casting company about a Booper commercial. They ended up not going with the trans angle. Giving Booper's insurance contracts explicitly exclude trans people from receiving medical care? I wasn't really surprised, but yet again I would have done it, because I needed the money. I would have done it with more reservations. I'm against private healthcare on principle after all, and it's Booper that's the reason I came out of facial feminization surgery on the hook for five grand of hospital fees. But when you need to eat, you're not going to turn down the opportunity to get the money you need to do so. Unsurprisingly, however, something I did out of necessity, because I was a trans woman being used to sell something, was met with outrage. Thankfully, because I was a nobody, it was directed at the woman in the advert. None of the big names crying, screaming and throwing up about it connected it back to me. Why would they? But I knew. I knew they were talking about me. When Graham Linehan, writer of Father Ted and the IT crowd, a man I stupidly used to regard as one of my heroes, went on a tirade online calling the woman in the advert a rapist, saying that she was a front of sexually assaulting women by appearing in this advert, he was talking about me. By appearing in an advert where I sat at a table and did some makeup, I was apparently raping women's bodies. And there were legions of transphobes online that gleefully agreed with him. That woman was the main character of transrobe Twitter for days. And that woman was... well, she was me. I won't lie, it, it really hurt. I can't imagine how I would have been able to handle that if I had actually had a public profile, if I had an active social media presence for people to go after, if I had a face people could instantly put a name to. Dylan Mulvaney had that and more. And she went through much, much worse than what happened to me, even in my nightmares. So I understand. As much as I recognise that companies exploit trans people's image to make profits for shareholders that likely want us dead, and as much as, in theory, I'm against the exploitation of the trans image to further capitalist interests, I understand. I understand. And I do it again, because, yet again, I need the money. <laughs> Unfortunately, under this system, if you don't work, you starve. And I don't want either myself nor Dylan to starve. So I can't condemn trans people for participating in this system. We don't have a whole lot of choice. All labour under capitalism is exploitative to some degree. Except for, obviously, patreon.com slash Bridget Empire, the only ethical consumption possible under capitalism, where you can get early videos and exclusive content completely guilt-free. No matter how I try and twist it, around in my head to make sense of it, however. The use of trans image to get a profit, to try and earn points from sympathetic liberals so they buy your products, is at best cynical, and at worst, malicious. So many trans people need your aid. Black trans women are being murdered every day. Moral panics are happening in multiple countries, leading to trans people losing access to medical care, being driven from their homes and worse. If these companies really cared about trans people, they'd be giving money to trans organisations, to trans communities directly, to mutual aid funds, to, well, anywhere but the profits of some billionaire shareholder who probably directly donates to your local far-right party and would gladly sell us all down the river for an extra buck just as easily as they'd use our faces to make a profit. These companies are not our friends, and we shouldn't let them persuade us that they are. They don't care about us. They haven't got our backs. In fact, they're taking advantage of us being in a dire political situation. We're a hot-button topic, as much as I hate that that's true. And we're big news. Using trans people in your advertising gets people talking. It gets publicity. But it does nothing for the overall goal of achieving rights, equality and safety for our community. It does nothing to prevent black trans women 
from being murdered in the streets. It does nothing to make sure trans people feel safe in their homes, in their home countries, just walking around, going to the shops. It does nothing for that. It does nothing to help us accept this Faustian bargain I myself made and would make again. A one-time helping hand in return for the use of my face to tell the world that, hey, this shop is good people. If you buy milk from them, that's trans rights, baby. Instead, why not donate to, I don't know, gendered intelligence, or better yet, trans rescue, so we can help trans people fling Uganda's anti-gay laws, or if you have a couple of quid left over, why not donate to individual trans people? Almost all of us have GoFundMes or something or another. We do, after all, as I keep stressing, need the money, unfortunately. But most of all, we need you with us. Standing with us. Fighting besides us. Buying products from co-op or drinking Bud Light does nothing for the trans community. Standing with us at protests, petitioning politicians on our behalf, fighting for our rights, that... that does. That's everything. So, maybe next time you're thinking about buying a can of delicious piss imitator Bud Light, how about you do that instead? And as always, thanks for watching. Hey everyone! That was... oh, my voice already broke. Hello. Puberty 3. Let's go. Hey everyone. Thank you for listening and watching and whatever it is you're doing while this video is on. Dishes. Cleaned. Stairs. Hoovered. Walks. Walked? Is that is that right? Something like that. If you're hearing this anyway, it means I'm neck deep in my big move to continental Europe. If you'd like to help me out with that, um, you probably can't donate to the GoFundMe I set up for my moving fund now. It's probably down, but... In lieu of that, you can donate to me on Coffee for a one-time donation, or sign up to my Patreon for as little as £1 a month, where, if you sign up, you can get early access to all of my videos, as well as getting exclusive content, such as full videos of my interviews of Princess Weeks and Rosenkreutz, and in addition, if you join my Patreon, I'll read your name out at the end of each video, just like these wonderful people who you should all model yourselves after. And those people are... Artie Wolf. Hayden Gala, Greg Noble, No Kings, Only Fools, H, Deanna McMillan, Caroline Regalado, Jenny Linsky, Alexandra Lilly, Jay Peterson, Anne Bechera, Howard Lott, Lara Van Loon, Scarjan, and Joey Cobalt. I, I love you all. I love you all. That sounds very... Every time I say this, it sounds insincere, but it's not. I love you all. Thank you for helping me keep the lights on. Right now, my last job just ended and I have nothing coming up. So this is all I have. So all of you that are helping me, thank God for you. You're the only thing keeping me fed and watered. Do you water humans? I guess I guess you get watered. I did a drink from, from a tap. Anyway, thank you all so much for your help. Um, consider joining them. And until next time, keep on wizarding. The only newspaper in Britain that has yet to go through the just for those few people who've been living under a rock or a In this case, it reached much further. Sounds like my typical weekend. Following this, there were calls of boy call. Following this, there were calls of boy. Follow. I was whisked down. I was whisked with with. How do you say that? I ah, my boobs have been there the entire time. 